Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season one finale of Dead Boy Detectives. Great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously, we're picking up in the aftermath of last episode... With Crystal getting at least open, chewing on one of the marbles or whatever that has her memories and starts to remember who she was. So it seems like a lot of what David had said before was kind of the point of, yeah, the stuff we got up to, it wasn't just me. That was also you. And it turns out that's the case. Crystal was not a nice person. She would basically manipulate and use her powers just to hurt people. And she got satisfaction from it. I mean, the sad thing is, I think she even comments on it later on that she and Esther are a lot alike. You take your pain and basically make yourself feel better to forget about your own pain you lash out and hurt other people because it eases your own pain because other people that so she did a lot of terrible stuff made a dude walk in traffic yeah the guy might not have been the greatest person but she would she would still close and make the guard have nightmares just for like trying to stop her so right that was one marvel and then she was remembering her parents which we don't know if her parents know what she is like they like her psychic abilities and stuff but it is that interesting contrast of who you were versus who you've become, where Crystal's having this conundrum of facing who she's become, being around, um, you know, Nico and as well as the boys, that it's like, wow, I was not a good person before. And the more these memories I swallow, the more I remember that, especially because she remembers her family name now. She remembers her parents' phone number. So she calls them up, but her parents are so busy, they didn't even realize she was missing for weeks. Now, I, in my head, it doesn't make it any better, but I try to at least justify it by being like, well, she's a troublemaker. So her disappearing for like weeks on end isn't that much of a stretch. But now it makes you wonder, or like, did she lash out the way she did because like she could never get her parents attention it's just like okay what credit card got maxed out now oh you need money like they weren't even concerned she was like i was missing for weeks <laughs> missing you were being over dramatic the mom was dismissive the dad was dismissive and it's like yeah everything that you've been hoped for that's the sad thing is it's not always what you thought it was because she didn't she was like right whatever bad i've done is because i was with david but now it's like oh i did bad before i got with david it almost makes you wonder is that why david was attracted to her in the first place like the darkness in him got attracted to the darkness in her he saw something in her that resonated with what he was so it almost makes you wonder on that front but yeah like coming to terms with yeah like i I, you know, you have, you have no idea. You never, no one wants to think, oh, I was a shitty person. Like, I, I'm, I'm sure I was a decent person because who I am now is representative of that, right? And it's like, you know, it's also kind of interesting because, you know, your, your experiences do influence you heavily. So meeting Charles and Edwin had such a positive impact on her. I think, you know, it's like, because it's also that, because it, my point was like, if someone else had met her at that time after getting David out of her, who would she be? But it could also be like, right, it just, you were basically a neutral uh, blank slate and you were tiptoed towards good because of that. But the argument could also be like, right, your experiences, your anger, your pain is what morphed you and contorted you into the person you became. So it's like, once you kind of got a, a fresh start, got to be a crystal 2.0 in a lot of ways. But for her, it's like, all right, I got to leave because I've got to go back to London because I've got to fix things. Because she was going to kind of run away from everything. But she wanted to go back home to, like, you know, try and fix stuff. And Charles and Edwin were like, well, we're going to go back to London, too, so we can tag along. But it's like, no, let, let's not. Like, she's like, she felt like this is something she had to handle on her own. She couldn't say, like, right, uh, Charles' positivity, uh, his positive optimism is like, we don't need that right now. I don't need that right now. Because once again, it's just like coming to terms with like who you were, that you weren't a good person, that it's just like, I was a horrible person in a lot of ways. And it's just like coming to terms with that. How, how do you, how do you resolve that in, in, in a lot of ways? So either way, at the same time that's happening, you know, Nico's kind of saying her goodbye to Charles because, I mean, uh, to Edwin, because he's, you know, thankful for her. It's like, right, I didn't get dragged off the hill at the end of the last episode when it came to the night nurse because of you. And so even Nico saying the thing of, well, you know, all of this has kind of made her like even more sure of like, right, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go see my mom 
and you know maybe me and her can talk about my dad you know it's just like this whole thing kind of helped push her in the right direction um when it comes to life um and it, it is kind of nice because it's like right like even if i'm going to london uh, edwin's like i will always be one mirror away and it's like i was like yeah i was like are we about to like literally break up the crew especially because Ginny has woken up and she's like what the hell is going on and they have to fill her in about the supernatural and she's like what ghosts aren't real i wasn't possessed by a demon so nico shows her the sprites wait that's wild and then she sees charles and edwin which i'm like what i mean she didn't almost die because of the the possession but i guess maybe just being possessed by a demon just like it unlocked the supernatural world to her eyes now so she didn't have i mean maybe getting possessed by a demon does tilt you towards near death i mean it's kind of well at least when it came to nico and the sprites she almost died so it makes sense on that part but i like i don't know if like maybe if a demon roots itself into you too long you almost i, I don't know we haven't really covered that in this in this continuity but i mean that's typically not the case like even using like supernatural rules of, of the tv show it's usually a thing of no as long as like you get the demon out, as long as the human body isn't destroyed in the process of being possessed then like the moment the demon's removed the person's fine but if the anything happens to the body while the demon's possessing them the demon will be able to still walk the body like a like a walking corpse but the person it will be dead they will automatically be dead or die the moment the demon leaves their body so either way putting all that aside the point is jenny's kind of going through her own crisis right now but i i love that conversation with crystal because it made her kind of figure stuff out on her own because she tells um jenny it's like right i can wipe your memories you forget about ghosts demons and sprites and all that you can just pretend like none of this happened. But for Ginny, it's like, my life is my life. Fucked up and all, I still want it to be mine. But, you know, it's like, really? Like, because it's like, yeah, it's still your life. And she's like, I'd rather not go through life ignorant. So it is a thing of Crystal kind of having to accept, like, right, I've got to accept the bad in my life, you know? And it's just like coming to terms with that, that motivates her even more of like, yeah, let me go to London. So she says her goodbyes to everyone. And Nico's like, right, you better, like, I'm gonna text you and you better answer because if you don't, I will like seriously go to London and like, you know, it, it, we're gonna have a problem, you know, if, if, if it comes to that, you know? Saying goodbye to Jenny, being like, yo, my parents are actually loaded, so I actually send you like a lot of extra rent. And she's like, you always just know the right thing to say. And the shake between her and Edwin, handshake between her and Edwin. Uh, it's like, yeah, I've missed this like newer, like funnier Edwin. And even Charles is kind of like, oh, like, he's like, why does this feel like a goodbye, goodbye that even when we're in London together, it, we might not see each other again. And just as Crystal was about to leave, when she actually did leave, wasn't too far from the butcher shop before it exploded because Esther came in like a wrecking ball. She's tested out her device. Um, obviously, no go. Like, that's why she needs Edwin because he can be an infinite battery for her. But any other ghost, it, it's a one shot. And once it's used up, and the, the, the power boost she gets from them is only like. Um, temporary it's also effed up because it's like right she has her snake eats children and she's eating their youth that way but it's also like here she is right now also um uh, eating like the energy she gets from them like it you know like like it's a drug or something and taking it like a drug but it's only a uh, temporary boost but yeah went down you know town making her way towards uh her um the the, the our detectives and just being mean and just like popping that little girl's balloons. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a lovely day. And then just like also made it like lightning in the air. I'm like, you're just a dick just to be a dick. Once again, wants all that power so she can run town. She's like, they'll practically be banging at my door to hand their children over to me. But yeah, she ends up capturing Edwin and Charles. Charles, who knows, well, the long run is she was just going to, like, torture him and mess with him. Edwin was going to be her infinite battery, but who knows what she would have done in the long run. She kind of talked about it a little last episode, what she would have done, but I think it's just she would have tortured Charles, and that's about it. We learned about, uh, a little more about Esther's past through, um, 
oh god, uh, through the Cat King, well, at least Nico and Crystal did because they needed to arm themselves in preparation because it's like, how do we go about killing an immortal witch? Only thing we have in our hand are two meat cleavers given us by Jenny because she was like, oh, don't want you going in there alone. But she's also like, I don't know how to kill a witch. Wow, the shit that's coming out of my mouth recently. Uh, you know, just in these past few hours of just finding out about the supernatural stuff being real. But the Cat King reluctantly helps because... Regardless of it all, he does care about Edwin. He kind of wishes that he didn't, but he does. So, Chris, no, again, not Crystal. Um, Esther's story goes back, doesn't go back as far as I thought. Because of that image of Lilith and her, I was like, oh, it felt like biblical times. It seems like her time was like, it was pioneer times, you know? She's like, yeah, before, he's like, before Port Townsend was Port Townsend, they, they obviously came here. She was here with her husband. Her husband was a no good cheat and she got into magic and she killed him. So it is kind of, she's a woman scorned, which I guess in my head, I thought once she got the immortality from Lilith, that's what made her, um, like gave powers, but it's like, no, she was already a witch. The book was, the book that kind of started all of this was her mom. So it's like, I guess witches, like witchism, like kind of like was probably like passed down in her family. Like there's some witchhood in her blood. She wasn't just a witch out of nowhere considering that was her mom's magic book. So I guess it was just naturally in her family. And so she awakened to that and proceeded to kill her husband and her lover. But uh, she grew stronger and stronger, but you know, it wasn't enough, so she need she reached out to Lilith, who ended up giving her immortality, but not youth. So eventually, finding out the source of all that youth was kidnapping kids and feeding them her snake. So there wasn't too too much that uh, the Cat King could really tell them, other than like, well, you have to. Well, I guess gave him the idea of like, well, we have to go after the snake because that is tied to her immortality. Because if it wasn't for that. Or at least it keeps her young. Like, she is going to be alive forever, but at least she'll be, like, a walking skeleton. So, like, she'll be alive, but she won't be able to do much. So, there's that. So, I guess he kind of gave him that idea. Also, black salt. Never really found out why that hurts a witch, but, you know, you don't need to know why the things that are effective against them. Like, right, I'm sure there are reasons why silver bullets or just silver in general works against werewolves. I'm sure there's deep lore reasons why. I I don't think I've ever heard the reason why. Does it really matter? No, you just know, generally speaking, silver works against werewolves. So, they go to Mick's shop and ask him for black salt. He's like, yo... Bet, I got you. It's like, yeah, that crazy lady was in here last time. So I wish you weren't going off to face her. But here, gave Nico like a lucky charm. Because he was like, right, you listened to my story when no one else did. And you actually tried to help me. And he's like, the fact is, take this lucky charm. Because you never know. Because the good that you do, you never know how it's going to come back around in any shape or form. Which that is something important to keep in mind when we talk about something later on in the episode. But our duo makes their way over to Esther who just won't. Obviously, she's just loving the thrill of all of this and just, you know, wanting more power. And it's just like for her, like she sees nothing wrong with it because once again, she was someone that was wronged so long ago and that that fueled her hatred. I mean, that that anger is what kept her going and she's never been able to let it go. And it's been the foundation of who she is right now. It, it's her just like Crystal was contorted by her anger. So was Esther. It's like, you know, we got a small peek into who Esther was before she was so wronged and hurt. So, and then she felt, and especially because I'm sure the Lilith thing was kind of an extra, because she already felt scorned by her husband and she was probably able to move past that. But Lilith's, like in her mind, Lilith with the fine print of, yeah, you'll live forever. You just won't be young forever. Like that just felt like another stab in the back. So for her, it's just like, I'm tired of so many other people having control over me, whether it was my husband, whether it was my uh, whether it's Lilith like I hate people dictating so much about me I want the power so that I never feel powerless again that no one else can take that power from, from me that no one can ever be more powerful than me you know it's just like she she felt vulnerable and weak in her life and she power was always her response to it what happened with her husband she got power and murdered him and his lover she made her deal with Lilith oh how is she going to respond with that like well I'm not going to take it down lying I'm going to uh kidnap kids and feed off their youth so that's always been her like response to someone wronging her in her mind is just you find more power to kind of compensate for it 
And as I brought up earlier, there is the uh, the whole conversation between Crystal and Esther. Like, right, you don't have to be that. We don't like we are people who've been like controlled by our anger and we lash out and hurt people. But she's like, because I met Edwin and Charles, I don't have to be that way. Like they. You saw what happened to them. They've been through some tragic things all on their own, but they still choose to be good. We still have that choice. We could still turn our things around. And if she hadn't caught Nico, who knows if what Crystal said would have actually gotten to her or not. I doubt it. Like, I think Esther was very set in her mind. I think she was probably toying with Crystal being like, oh, you almost got me. He's like, who knows? Because if it really did, like, would Nico sneaking to get uh edwin but it's like right you didn't really mean anything you said you were just saying that to distract me but it's like yeah crystal was saying that for you just as much as she was saying it for herself uh but ultimately nico sacrifices herself so i was like no there's there's no way they just did that i was like it's like well it was like especially because they kept setting that up with the eight ball thing of oh my god uh not looking so good especially because the situation at the shop she was like oh my god i thought i died like it was like oh it seemed like they were They've been foreshadowing it for a while, but you're almost like, I guess it's like, well, nothing's happened yet. Everything's worked out. It's like, well, eventually everyone's luck runs out to some extent. So, but sadly, Nico died. And I thought it was interesting that when she died, it's like we were seeing all those flashes of stuff over the course of the season. I was like, what is that going to be? Especially because when that all plays out, they do focus on the lucky charm that Mick had given her. So I'm like, what is that? We'll have to wait uh, and kind of speculate that when we get to the end of the episode. But obviously fueled by anger, um, Crystal ends up using her powers against Esther. And it's like, oh, you want to drag me into a memory? Because she thought, like, right, you're not going to be able to like, get inside my head. I'm prepared for it now. And I'm stronger. But it's like, nope. Like, I'm taking you back to that memory. And I was like, What's, what are you going to do with this? Like, can you... Really, like, are you going to use her memory against her? She's like, I'm immortal. There's nothing you can do. But I'd forgotten that earlier in the conversation with, partway through the conversation that uh, with the Cat King, you know, the conversation about Lilith. Once again, Asha was like, hey, you can talk to Lilith, which I guess also kind of proves like, okay, Asha isn't Lilith, like I was kind of guessing. Uh, but either way, it's like you can reach Lilith. Not, you don't have to use that specific painting to talk to her any image of her. All Crystal needed to do was go to a memory where Lilith would be at. And that was when she made her deal with uh, Esther. And it's like, right, hear me, Lilith. Are you really going to operate? You're, you're all about scorned women. What about Esther? She's been hurting all these young girls. What is their justice? And it's like the moment they snap back, Esther's like, what did you do? I was like, what did she do? Because you seem fine. Seems like your voice was still like distorted when you were pissed at her. Like, oh, you're going to hurt her? I was like, so it seems like you still have your power. So what's going on? So at the same time, that's all happening. Charles is dealing with the the snake. Broke his magic um, cricket uh, bat. And I'm like... Is that going to, is that repairable? I hope so. That thing is sick. Once again, it thinks like a damn boomerang, but that got broke, pulled out a sword. So I don't, what was the court? I was about, I was about to say court fencing sword. I don't, I don't, well, it might be a court fencing sword. I don't think it is. It might be a court fencing sword, like with that, with that particular like hilt slash guard, but I don't know. Uh, I like swords, but I'm not like well-versed in all swords. Uh, but either way, did a pretty fucking sick cartwheel dealing with the snake which was pretty dope but now that that thing's dead all of esther's like power not gone but it's the ties to her youth so without it she's just an old frail woman who's just going to live forever until she is literally i mean despite immortality it doesn't make up for the fact is that you are a decrepit person and can't move you know so all of a sudden lilith shows up and drags her out it's like which i'm also like you could have done that long before now because it ain't like, oh, Esther's only recently been doing this. But I guess Lilith kind of does her own thing. It's kind of like I don't interfere with the mortal world until Crystal reached out to her, a, a hurt woman because it's like, hey, you killed my friend. And also you've been hurting so many other girls. And now like, I guess it's like gods don't really respond until someone beseeches them. And then it's like, oh, let me let me pay attention to, oh, so this is what's been happening on Earth since I made that deal with you all that time ago, Esther. Has no one, con I mean, I guess no one in correlation and connection with Esther has reached out. But maybe Crystal reaching out is what fueled her to do what she did. Which begs the question, what happens to Esther now? Once again, that immortality, I don't. I don't know if that's implying like Lilith's taking that away, but she's dragging her somewhere, I guess, maybe to keep her 
like locked away in a prison forever. That's the only thing I can surmise from that. So that's all been dealt with, but it's still the tragedy of Nico died. And now it's like, right, gotta let her mom know what's up, which that makes it even more tragic because the moment you hear that, you're like, there's no way because, of course, they were setting up the red flags of Nico being like, hey, I'm gonna go see my mom now and we could talk about my dad. And she's had all these questions to the night nurse about where her dad ended up last episode, the whole like, oh, like, can you bring the dead back to life? And lo and behold, there's a whole zombie thing, which now I'm like, is that supposed to be implying what happened to Nico? Did Nico become a zombie? Because it's interesting, though, because when they, like, come back to Nico's room, like, after she had died, the sprites were going. So I was like, how the hell did they get out? I was like, did someone let them out? But it's like, well, if Nico's alive again, maybe she was like, right, I, I'm not going to let the others know I'm alive. I'm going to bring you guys along. So it's like, you're kind of my supernatural compatriots because I like, because it does seem like they're nice enough for her because they're like, oh, so what happens now? So is Nico like a permanent zombie now? Or is she something else? Like, where did she go in the time frame when she was gone? Was she, was she, did she go to the darkness? Like, because she would have been, well, you only go to the lost and found department when you're not where you're supposed to be. Because death never, which can you know, death never showed up to get her because she was probably already gone. Which, you know, they started off the beginning of the season of death being like, yeah, I was looking for you, but you weren't ready. So... What does that mean for Nico? Like, has Death come to visit her? But it's like, right, you're not ready yet, so... Because, once again, she also had a fear of Death, but she still persevered and still, like, kept on despite being afraid, you know? Because uh, they, they even showed the message as the, a title card of, like, when, when Nico had died of... Uh, even if we're afraid, we'll still go, even if we, like, die horrifically. And lo and behold, Nico died, but... It also feels like that might be a setup of what whoever Nico is now is not the Nico we know. Like the positive, loving person, the good nature, as Ginny puts it, like a unique, unique good per goodness in a very unique way. It feels like whoever Nico is now, it might imply like she's had a shift that she might not be that person she once was. Part of me wonders if the the lady that works as like the night nurse's supervisor. I was wondering if she might be. I was like, there's no way she's Nico's mom, right? Because she says the exact same thing that Mick told, um, told Nico when she got that good luck charm. Because all he said was um, just uh, about, you never know the good that you do, how it might come back around. So it's like the fact that she said the exact same thing. Once again, uh, Charles and Edwin weren't there at the time. Only Crystal was. But Crystal's not there with them right now in London to hear that conversation. So I'm like, what are the chances of that? And it's like, is that supposed... You don't think that's kind of implying like that lady might... Because she was also very cagey about being like, well, let's not worry about that. Like, you know, what my name is. But I'm like, could she be like Nico's mom and maybe her mom is something supernatural and she just never knew? I don't know. Probably not. But it's just like, once again, the wording, the fact is... But maybe that, like, her wording, her saying that might just be the thing of, yeah, that might just be kind of a wink and nod. She has no direct correlation or connection to Nico, but maybe it has something to do with Nico's storyline. Maybe that's all that's supposed to be to connect a thread, that, that line. That maybe she's aware of Nico's circumstances, especially with the Lost and, uh, Lost and Found department. Because Charles and Edwin and Crystal and, and Jenny are just under the impression like, oh, death already came to her. She's in her afterlife, not knowing she's out there on her own. Well, not on her own because she's got the sprites with her. So not sure where the hell they are. Like, not unless, like, she has the power. Because like, she's in the snowy place, so not unless she's traveling the world. But I was like, not unless she can, like, cross different planes of existence now because of whatever her constitution is. I love that the group offers Ginny, like, hey, you can come to London with us, which she's like, well, my not-so-successful family business. And she's like, I'm not, man, eh, it's a no. And are like, ah, that sounds like a hard maybe. So I was like, oh, so we're kind of bringing the entire crew back next, uh, if there is a future season, like, we're potentially bringing everyone back. Because I'm like, okay, Ginny, I mean, your, your eyes have been open to the supernatural world. You don't have much reason to stick around this place. Plus, there's a lot of reminders of, yeah, my business that got blown up by a witch. Also, my stalk, my obsessed stalker that tried to murder me. So there's that too. Uh, you have Edwin meeting up with the Cat King, and kind of saying their goodbyes. But he's also thanking him. It's like, yeah, if it wasn't for you, you ended up helping 
me and my friends, but also I recognize why you were right about us both being the same because you're lonely. All the different, you know, um, looks and outfits and why you like act the way you do, it's because you're lonely. He's like, and the fact is, I know because it takes one lonely person to kind of recognize a lot of lonely person, but it's also like, right. There's a, there is, in fact, 145 cats in Port Townsend. He's like, no, 46. And he was like, no, it's 145. He's like, no, you forgot to count yourself. So he's like, yeah, like, you know, uh, I doubt this is like goodbye, goodbye. But I guess it's like there will always be some correlation and connection between these two. So I would almost wondered if they were going to get together or not. Um, the Cat King and Edwin. I think Edwin, like, there's, there's a... That connection with the Cat King has helped him grow as a person and be able to face a lot of who he was, that he's more comfortable as himself now in a lot of ways. So I think that's probably what he's gotten away from that relationship. So who knows? But I doubt, like, we've seen the end of this, especially considering how, like, the Cat King definitely fancies him. So we'll see. We'll see what the future potential will hold for them. But obviously, it isn't just Jenny. Crystal's also deciding to kind of stick with the Dead Boy Detectives because for her, it's like... She doesn't want to let go of her current fucked up life just to latch on to like her past life. It's like, I'm going to try and stay me as much as possible as I try to fix and figure out who I was. Because I don't think she ever swallowed all the marbles. There's still like, I think like she swallowed like what, four in total? There was still like one or two left, wasn't it? But I don't know. To be fair, there was just so much going on, she probably didn't have enough time. Or maybe in between, like, Nico's death and the ending of the episode, she swallowed whatever were remaining, maybe. But either way, uh, was not expecting that little twist at the end where the night nurse shows up. It's like, well, she got all the paperwork done. Because it was like, it was a box within a box. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, it's a night nurse. Oh, and she brought her supervisor, too. And she's so giddy about it. Like, yeah, you're going to, like, you're going to get it now. Let's go to the Lost and Found. But it's like, right, I want kind of uh, leniency and I want to kind of bring up something about me being in hell being a clerical error. But the supervisor was like, yeah, but did you sign the right forms? I'm like, how am I supposed to sign the right forms? I don't know. Like, how am I su how is anyone supposed to know a lot of this clerical shit? Like, you're not, you're supposed to just automatically know it. And it's like, maybe it's like, well, if you were really supposed to, maybe you would have known what to do. But... It wasn't until she took notice of their board and I was like, what, what's going on? That she saw the cases they solved. When she brought up the nice nurse, nice nurse, the night nurse's history of like, oh yeah, didn't I award your department for the fact that you closed so many open cases? And she's like, yes. I thought the implication was going to be like, actually, she took credit for a lot of the stuff that Charles and Edwin did. I thought that's what I was implying, but it's like, no. She was just trying to make the point of, oh, you did that, but they, they're doing the same thing. In fact, they are doing a lot of good that and there's so many people dying nowadays and you know the afterlife is kind of like stacked especially lost in lost in um found department so it's like right we need the boys out there doing their work because they do good work they solve cases they help people so they can help in a way in a very unique way that's only them so keep up the good work and the fact of the matter is, you guys might need a supervisor around here. So, night nurse, you're staying here on Earth. I'm like, yes! Because you know what that means? We don't have to, like, worry about, like, oh, like, will, will we, if in the future, will we potentially see Ruth Connell? It's like, no, we definitely would be. Because she's, once again, this little crew kind of being put together. Of, like, the night nurse, obviously Crystal, uh, maybe Jenny. I don't know. She might still be a maybe. Uh, it feels like it's kind of like a, nah, she's going to go along, too. But it's like, hey... Everything worked out. I even love Charles being like, oh, do you think the night nurse will let me call her Charlie? You know, I was like, where are you go? Why Charlie? And she, he's like, oh, yeah, because of like, you know, uh, Charlie and Angels. I was like, oh, I would have, if he had never finished that sentence, I was like, I would have never known why the fuck you, I was like, because your name is Charles? Why? Oh, no, Charlie's Angels. I was like, of course. Uh, so, yeah, that was, uh, that's, that's really interesting. So, boys are back home. I mean, to be fair, they're supposed to go back to Port Townsend because they're supposed to take the long way home with Crystal. So, and they're also supposed to be helping finish cleaning up uh, Ginny and uh, Ginny's shop. So, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, see what the future holds for the show. Like I said, especially with that teaser at the end, a lot more cases to be uh, solved, other characters, especially because they had that setup in episode seven where it's like, despair is kind of like oh yeah you and me are friends now I'm like what the fuck does that mean i don't know if that's kind of like i couldn't remember 
uh, the other sibling's name, but I, I looked it up because it was bothering me. It's Desire. I was like, of course. I, I'm so bummed at myself for not remembering Desire. But I'm like, I don't know if Despair is doing any stuff still for Desire because Desire's like, you know, got their machinations, especially when it comes to their siblings, specifically Dream. But Dream made it clear in, like, the season one finale, like, yeah, like, we're going to have a problem. But it's like, oh, like, um, but, you know, Desire's still kind of like, you know, I'm coming for your throat, bro. So... We'll see. Um, if that like if that's just despair on their, her own lane, or whether or not that's in correlation with something desires got cooked up, you know. So I I don't know because that's that's another loose thread that we could see where that goes. But uh, yeah, uh, obviously I'm getting to this late. I've been sporadically watching these episodes and getting these uploaded, but uh, it's like the 19th I think at the time we're recording this. This should be going up tomorrow. I'm not gonna like rush to kind of get this up. Uh, today but either way so the show's been out like a little less than a month so at the time of recording this there still hasn't been a decision made but obviously there's still room for plenty of stories to tell so i'd love more crazy adventures to see what other cases they have and what the future holds obviously we still have to resolve a lot of crystal stuff from last season the david thing too he's still buried in that tree so that's gotta be something dealt with nico's circumstances this new situation with the night nurse um, maybe finding out more about this, um, this, uh, supervisor, maybe, um, there's also the element of, obviously we, we cross paths with two of the endless death and desire, who else is going to pop up, what other characters from Sandman will pop up potentially in the future, I don't know, I, I, fingers crossed, hoping the show gets a season two, I know the show was in like the top ten, at least here in the U.S. for a while, it's no longer, I don't, at least I don't think it is, I could be mistaken, so, but I mean, I don't know how well received the show has been, once again, it mainly comes down to viewership, and I just hope the show has gotten a good viewership, I know, like like I said, I've taken a very long time to get to it, but I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the show, and I'm just, fingers crossed, hoping for more, it'd also be dope, because I don't know what the second season of like how like where the Sandman is production wise. I don't know if that's still in the middle of production or what. So I just looked it up. Uh, it was uh, I, I came across an article from like last month that was saying that I guess uh, the Sandman went back into production because it stopped in production stopped production because the strikes last year. Uh, but I think, like, it's still going to be filming out throughout the summer. So the reason why I was bringing that up, because I was like, hopefully, like, well, if it's still in production. I mean, this still could have been set up beforehand, but if it's still in production, maybe you can bring over a lot of stuff. Some At least not a lot, but some of the elements from this could tie into, like, kind of like how the boys in Gen V work, like, the dead boy detectives and the Sandman kind of could operate in the same way, where it's just kind of like... Gen V is kind of its own thing, but it also kind of serves as a season 3.5 for the boys type of thing. So I, w I wonder if this could kind of be like a the, the Sandman 1.5, but also still being its own thing. So uh, I'd be curious to see like if they'd incorporate any really stuff from Dead Boy Detectives into the Sandman. But either way, like I said, just fingers crossed hoping for season two and, and beyond. I wouldn't just want a second season. I'd like the show to go on for as long as possible. Gotta continue with these characters and this world and see what is in store next. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.